wanted to talk about math. <laughs> um, I would do my video on functions. Let's do functions. Let's start with the definition. Every element in the domain is mapped to exactly one thing in the range. So what I have here is a mapping. I have my friends, which is the domain, and I have their grades, which is the range. Every friend has a specific grade. This right here is a function because every friend has one grade. Now, if I had a friend that had two different grades, then this would not be a function. So let's say if Max had a C and he had a D, then that would not be considered a function. So every element in the domain is mapped to exactly one element in the range. I have two equations here and I need to know whether they are functions or not. So according to the definition, every element in the domain is mapped to exactly one element in the range. So when you're looking at an equation, just think to yourself, if I plug in an X value, how many Y values would I get back? So for this first equation, if I was to plug in any X value, I would only get one Y value back. So if I plugged in like negative 2, if I plug negative 2 in for the x value, then I'm going to get 4 back. I'm not going to get two different y values. So whatever element I plug in for the x value in the first equation, I will just get one y value back. So I say, yes, this is a function. For the second equation, same thing. If you picked an x value and plugged it in, you're only going to get one y value back. So according to the definition, this is a function. Okay, let's say I have y squared is equal to x. Now if I try to isolate the y, what I'm going to do is take the square root of both sides. So square root square root. When I do the square root of the x, I have to put a plus or minus there. Now the square root of y squared is just y. And then I have plus or minus the square root of x. Now this is not a function. This is not a function because if I plug in an x value, it's going to give me two different y values. So like if I plug in x equals 2, then I get y is equal to plus or minus square root of 2, which gives me two y values, square root of 2 and negative square root of 2. And because it gives you two values, it's not a function. So let's talk about how to find domain range, how to find the domain and range of graphs, and how to find the domain and range of equations. Um, so let's take a moment and look at that. Hi. Okay, domain and range. I have the first equation on the paper, y equals negative 5x plus 4. Now, when you're trying to find the domain and range, what you're really looking for is if you have any restrictions or not. And restrictions are values that you know you can't have. Now when you look at this equation, there is no restrictions on what x value you can plug in. You can plug in any x value that you want to. And if you plug in that x value, it will give you some type of y value. So there's no restrictions for this particular example. Now if there is no restrictions, then you can say any number on your number line can be plugged into this equation. So your domain is going to be negative infinity to infinity. This is all real numbers works. You can plug in negatives, positives, fractions, decimals, it doesn't matter. And same thing with the range. Range is the y values. And depending on what x value you plug in, you can get any y value on the number line. So your range is negative infinity to infinity. 
Let's look at a second example. The second example is y is equal to square root of 2x minus 5. And with this particular example, there is a restriction. When you think about a square root, you can't take the square root of a negative number. You can take the square root of any positive number, but you can't take the square root of a negative number. So this particular problem has restrictions that we need to talk about. So in order to figure out what values do work for this equation, what you do is you set everything underneath the radical. You say that you want it to be greater than or equal to zero. And the reason why you want it to be greater than or equal to zero is because you can't take the square root of a negative number. And negative numbers are less than zero. So everything underneath the radical needs to be greater than or equal to zero. So what we do now is we solve for x. And we get x is greater than or equal to 5 over 2. So any x value that is greater than or equal to 5 over 2 is going to be your domain. Those are the values that you can plug into this equation. So that's bracket 5 over 2 to infinity. Your range is something that you have to think about also. Your range, if you think about the lowest value that you can take the square root of, the lowest value you can take the square root of is 0. And if you take the square root of 0, you get 0. If you go any lower than 0, then you're going to be taking the square root of a negative number, which you can't do. It gives you an imaginary number. And we want completely real numbers. So our range is going to be 0 to infinity. So our range is going to be 0 to infinity. Let's take a look at a third example. y is equal to 4 over 3x plus 1. This equation has restrictions because it's set up in a fraction and you have a variable in your denominator. Now, if you have a variable in your denominator, then you want to make sure that there's no value of x that makes your denominator equal to 0. So because I may have some type of restriction, I'm going to write that I have restrictions. And the way that you find that, you say you want your denominator to not be equal to 0. Because if we have 0 in our denominator, it will be undefined. So if I go through and solve, I end up getting x cannot be equal to negative 1 third. Any other number on the number line works, I just can't have negative 1 third. Because if I plug in that value, then that's going to make 0 in my denominator. So to write my domain in interval notation, I put negative infinity to negative 1 third union with negative one-third to infinity. Now, to find the range, what we need to do is think about what values can we not get on the y. The only value that you can't get on the y is 0. Because of the 4 in the and no, I'm sorry. Because of the 4 in the numerator, there is no way that you can make this equal to 0. 
So zero is the only thing that we can't get in our range values. So that's going to be negative infinity to zero and zero to infinity. Okay, three more examples we have here. Y is equal to negative 5 over 2 minus 3X. And there are restrictions here because I see X in the denominator. So I'm going to say that we have restrictions. And the restriction says that we can't have our denominator equal to 0. So I say my denominator cannot be equal to 0. And I'm going to solve this for x to find that x value that makes the denominator 0. x cannot be equal to 2 over 3. If I plug that value in, then I get 0 in my denominator. So to write this in interval notation, I'm going to put negative infinity to 2 over 3 union with 2 over 3 to infinity. With my range, I can't have 0. There's no way that I can get 0 from this equation. So 0 is the only thing that I'm taking out of my range. So that's negative infinity to 0 and 0 to infinity. Second example, y is equal to 5 x squared minus 2. When I look at this equation, there is no fractions with the variable in the denominator, and there's no square root. So there are no restrictions with this equation. I can plug in any value of x. So I'm going to put no restriction. And since there's no restrictions on this equation, I know my domain is going to be negative infinity to infinity. This is all real numbers. Now, my range is a little bit different. So this particular equation is a parabola. And there's a lowest value with that parabola. The lowest value is going to be at negative 2. If you plug in 0 for the x value, then that gives me a y value of negative 2. And that's going to be the lowest x value. So our range is negative 2 to infinity, and I include the, neg the number negative 2, so I put a bracket with the negative 2. Now, our third example, I have y is equal to the square root of 5 minus 2x. There are restrictions here, and the restriction says that everything under the radical has to be greater than or equal to zero. So I take everything underneath the radical and say that I want it to be greater than or equal to zero, and then I solve for x. When I divide by negative 2, it makes the inequality flip, and I get 5 over 2. So x is less than or equal to 5 over 2. To put that in interval notation for my domain, it's going to be negative infinity to 5 over 2 with the bracket. My range, if you think about the lowest value that I can take the square root of, the lowest value is 0. So the range is 0 to infinity. Now let's see how this looks in our graphing calculator. Let's press y equals. And let's enter the first example from the last three problems we did. Negative 5 over 2 minus 3x. Notice I put the denominator in parentheses. 
Now we're going to go to Zoom. Zoom is our preset window, so we're going to go to Z decimal. Z decimal goes from negative 5 to 5 on each axis, and it looks like this. If you were to press Z standard, then that makes our window go from negative 10 to 10 on each axis. So it makes it, it zooms out a little bit. I'm going to go back to Z decimal just to zoom in so we can tell what the domain and range is. Now from our work we said that our domain was negative infinity to 2 over 3 and then 2 over 3 to infinity. And then our range was 0, oh no, negative infinity to 0 and then 0 to infinity, which we see that in our graph. Now let's enter the second equation. And what I did was I, I pressed enter on the equal sign to turn off that first function. And you can keep the equation there and still go on to the next one. So I entered the second function, which is a parabola. And we can compare the domain we got was negative infinity to infinity. And then the range was negative 2 to infinity. And you can see that with our picture. Now let's turn this graph off. Notice I'm going to the equal sign and pressing the enter button and then I go to the third y equals and I'm putting square root of 5 minus 2x and then I hit the graph button and my domain says that it was negative infinity to 5 over 2 with a bracket and then my range was 0 to infinity, so it goes on forever up. And this is how our graphs match the pictures that we saw, or the work that we did. I hope this video was helpful because I am cold and I'm about to go home. Bye.